the world of the 50s versus 15s suits versus hoodies oxfords versus sneakers do you know which world i'm talking about in this world you don't go out to catch a client but to catch a pokemon and that adds more value to your company this is the future work environment which has already started setting in this is the kind of change that the corporate world has not seen in the past 160 years we parents teachers universities and education policy makers need to know how do we raise the next wave of working executives today we are raising the children very differently from what is expected of them in the corporate world in the past two decades there have been the gap has been widening between the skills that are produced by the educational institutions and those which are developed by the corporate those which are needed by the corporate world we have now come to a situation where the fortune international says that only 1% of the jobs which are listed on the monster website require an mba qualification which is down by 50% from previous years many senior executives like sheryl sandberg peter thiel elon musk have been saying that an mba is not necessary to succeed entire industries could be flipped on its head by some kids with an app says fortune international and if we look around this has actually been so It took 7 years for Airbnb to be more valuable on paper than Hilton worldwide. It took Ford, it took Uber 6 years to top Ford and General Motors. The top company executives of today are in an awkward position. If they do nothing or they dismiss startups, they risk irrelevance. The latest issue of the Economist magazine has brought back the machinery question in the context of artificial intelligence. Let me tell you what it says. It says that artificial intelligence will make waves of people unemployed like it was 160 years ago during the industrial revolution. So, what do we do about it? The most prominent question before our parents and teachers is how do we bring the children into this world to make them succeed and thrive the fortune magazine has an article about knowing the limits of machine in their july edition it goes on to say that growing number of jobs at every level can be done much better by machines not just faster and cheaper but better than human beings So the most prominent question that we parents teachers education policy makers have is how do we get our children to become problem solvers because what the world needs today is not just cogs and pegs that fit into a huge machinery and carry on like that but those who can solve problems and take the world into the future we believe that preteens and teens have tremendous potential because of their creative capacity and the boundless energy that they have however going through the formal education process most of them lose these skills and become more of cogs and pegs that fit into a huge machinery and then they carry on like that throughout their lives so we feel that we need to change that so how do we go about doing this mountain like job Well, this is easy because I'm not yet an adult. What an adult sees as mountain-like is just a collection of their notions stacked one on top of another. I have the advantage to be free from such notions. We have devised a program which has touched 350 kids and made them from consumers to creators. We have made them into problem solvers, which will help them in the real world. Here is what our program is. Well, the children come on a weekend in small groups of varying age. In an informal setting, they sit on the sofa, lie down on the carpet, or even sit on the terrace. 
they visualize their ideas and use code blocks to create them. They develop those ideas into games, stories, animations, apps, just about anything. Then they share their excitement by projecting their work on a big screen. In between, they watch some inspiring tech videos and enjoy hot chocolate and cookies. Let us see how this skill building is useful in the real world. One Sunday, 20 minutes before the closing time of a major grocery store in Luxembourg, known as Del Hayes, an operational issue sprang up. The entry door in the underground car parking floor stopped working. Customers started building up on both sides of the door. Del Hayes officials tried, but could not fix the issue. The reputation of the store was at stake. I was 12 at that time. I analyzed the problem and applied computational thinking. Computational thinking is a process which is, or which we teach, which is basically breaking bigger problems into smaller bite-sized pieces, and that way you can deal with the bigger problem faster. So, I found out that the sensor and the door had malfunctioned. So I asked Dad to, move, to cover the whole sensor with his hand while I ran and pushed the door. The door opened and I started to work normally thereafter. This saved the store from dismantling systems and carrying out detailed diagnostics. So, here's how it all started for me. Around five, once upon a time, around five years back, I was nine and just a normal kid. I was forgetting to do my homework and spending lots of time raiding villages and infiltrating shores. When I was bored of everything else, I teased my younger four-year-old sister. Life was blissful and pretty good, as I thought then. However, my mom was getting worried. My mom, who was a project manager, came across the idea of a Kanban board. It was a time management chart for me to, for me to plot my activities. I stuck to that as a discipline and I started displaying my activities. Now my mom knew what was next on my agenda. Now happy, she stopped pulling me out of storming beaches and attacking villages. It was a win-win situation. This small success led my mom to get excited about something more. She has been a board member of the PMI Institute of Luxembourg and has been developing courses to teach younger children project management skills. To my surprise, I was listed as a co-speaker with her in the next event. I enjoyed sharing my experiences with the formerly dressed adults. And they were happy that their children could now also manage to do their homework and not just spend their time playing games. I, um, when I was 11, I started co-facilitating workshops with my mom to teach young children how to code. When I was 12, I started to run those sessions independently. This small success um, was something bigger. A, a German-based startup promoting children as teachers gave me the assignment to script, perform, and record three talks on teaching computer programming skills. I did a series on how to, how to develop a website. They got so happy with my content and production that they presented me with the Mac Mini and some other gadgets that I always wanted. I thought this to be really, really cool. There have been many hurdles in this process as well. The most significant have been mindset hurdles. Many adults carry the traditional notion that only someone senior in age could know something more than them. Another mindset hurdle is that parents instinctively think that coding is a hardship imposed on younger children. They think that learning on a weekend means depriving their child of relaxation time or sports and is being cruel to their child. Some logistic hurdles are that this summer I was offered an internship at CERN. However, Swiss national laws require interns to be at least of 16 years of age. I wish they would have allowed younger interns under the influence of a guardian. Another example is that EU had announced a scheme around two weeks back to nurture young, passionate entrepreneurs in the age group of 16 to 24. I had desired to join this initiative and I met all the criteria, except for the minimum age of 16 years. I believe that physical age should not be a, should not be a boundary to limit one's true entrepreneurial passion. Nevertheless, I keep moving on. Children who are considered to have reading or writing deficiencies in the eyes of adults, or so-called dyslexic, are one of my best students. Although adults evaluate children based on their ability to speak and read, what I notice in them is their ability to do and make. One of my seven-year-old students could not read what was written on the code block. 
but had the intelligence to pick up the right blocks and make it into this amazing maze game, which even 12-year-old students cannot. This is the kind of hidden talent that we are able to explore and bring out to the absolute delight of their parents. The smile on their faces motivate us to do more. Here are some examples of the mobile apps that they make. A drawing app, a whack-a-mole, and a hangman game was made by a student using Python. As you see, that uh, they also made an animal generator, which I'm not sure what it's used for. Here are some projects that were made by 7 to 13 year olds. This was made by a seven year old student. This is a project to show that if you cut down trees, you will not have enough oxygen and die. This was made to teach his younger brother the alphabet. George wanted to include himself into the action. Thank you. Thank you. In conclusion, we have three key messages. One, most parents think that if children are not subjected to strict discipline, they will while away their time and get involved in silly things and destroy their future. They need to trust and empower their children. Secondly, many, many adults have different expectations from preteens and teens and what they themselves do in their day-to-day -day lives. This subconsciously affects the children and hampers their motivation to learn. Finally, the education system everywhere fills up the learning time of children with the task of memorizing trivial details, such as names, dates, etc., and leaves little time to learn concepts and put them into applications. A problem-solving based approach is an immediate requirement if governments want to see their youths fully employed. If they continue as they are, societies will be full of cogs and pegs, but very few entrepreneurs with the caliber to design, make, or do. Overhauling the entire education model on a problem-solving based approach is an immediate requirement if governments want to see their youths fully employed. Coding is the strongest tool to make that happen across all subjects. Sta we are making our own little effort in this direction in Luxembourg. Standing in Varanasi, the spiritual capital of India, I call for a change. Let coding be the new alphabet of education. Fifties with fifteens. Suits with hoodies. Oxfords with sneakers. Boardrooms in the garage. When can we bring this change? To us, the time is now. Thank you.